And please welcome Douglas and Sonia. And Jacob from Save the Children. Do you want to sit together? We don't have to sit together. We're married. We spend the whole time okay. together. <laughs> okay. Katja, I think the film was already shown on Arte, right? Uh, when did you finish shooting? When did you finish editing? And maybe you can tell us what happened since also, if you're still in touch with, with some of the, the students, with some of the protagonists that we've seen. Yes, yes. Yeah, good evening. Thank you very much that you all come here. I'm, I'm delighted to see such a full audience in Corona time, seriously. I'm really happy about this. It's, um, for me, it's a big honor to be a part of this wonderful festival. And I want to apologize. My heart's really beating very fast because this is the first time that we've shown this, um, the English version of it. And uh, it turned out that um, we should have checked in advance how that worked sound-wise in such a big audience. So please, I want to apologize for those scenes where we were uh, listening to the wonderful students who spoke, who decided to speak in, in Farsi and were then dubbed by uh, wonderful English actresses. And the sound was a problem there. Please uh, forgive me. I hope you could follow. So um, to your question, we were filming in November 2020 uh, before Douglas and Sonia had um, to leave the island. And uh, then I was um, editing, that was the other question, right? When I finished editing. Um, we, we started January, we continued March, and we finished in April. <laughs> and yes, then it was premiered uh, on the French-German uh, channel Arte. Um, yeah, it was really very nice to work with um, Arte, I must uh, confess. But what, more, what is more important, maybe, what happened since then, I would like to hand that over to Douglas and Sonia because they are back on the island and some of the students are here and uh, of Refocus who are with us, among us, and maybe we should also give them a warm welcome um, because they're in Germany now. You can get up, you can go. Yeah, please, get up. please stand up so that we can see you. Yes. Yes, we have several students who have been moved in between uh, to Germany. We have actually a very big uh, audience and uh, uh, seven of them in Click Kino, where yeah. Katia showed the movie on Sunday. Unfortunately, the rule says that they can leave their center here in uh, Germany for 72 hours, so they couldn't stay longer. Uh, but we have uh, students who have been in Greece, for, um, in Germany for quite some time, already for a year. They are not in the movie, but part, are part of the program. Um, it's quite shocking, Douglas, that they kicked you out. And Sonia, you were not kicked out, only Douglas was kicked out? Uh, <laughs> well, I'm American. So. Uh, he's American, I'm Polish, but by default, because we're married. So it was <laughs> a pretext. They figured out, wow, the guy is American, we can kick him out. I mean. It, 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 it sounds very fishy. I mean, well, it's low, low hanging fruit. It's uh, you know, easy to get someone out of the country when you have the Schengen excuse. Um, but generally speaking, it's become very, very difficult for any journalist to work on Lesbos and to report on the situations that's happening there. So um, I really feel that the work that we did in the BBC film challenged their narrative about what happened with the Moria fire. And then immediately after that, the pressure came. And then as a result of that, they were able to find, they always find creative ways to remove you from the scene. Um, but we're back and we're in full force and we're over capacity. We have a waiting list for students who want to continue to join the classes. Classes are still running right now while we're here for this week. And we have a whole entire new team of staff. Our summer team has left, our fall team has arrived and we're, we're expanding. And, uh, and it's because we have a ton of students who are interested uh, to continue to grow and learn. And I had the uh, big honor to, to also teach within the yes. program. Yeah, it was amazing. Because this is uh, something that I uh, said last year. It was my uh, only critique and I said, you, you, you're running here such a professional film school and the students <laughs> there are so elaborate um, filmmakers. 
But when it comes to acting, I think there's, we, we can go, there's still some way to go. So I returned <laughs> uh, this year and it was very exciting and um, uh, Douglas uh, was one of my students, actually. <laughs> That's true. So you're turning into an actor soon? Will we yeah. see you? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Very talented I guy. A lot. <laughs> um, Jakob, um, it's quite, I, I, I'm still coming back on this issue that they were like kicked out for obvious political and censorship reasons. Uh, is that uh, something that you witnessed too with Save the Children, that there's more and more pressure, especially if one goes a little bit against uh, some kind of of the news that, that is comfortable for some politicians? Yes, from, from what we are hearing, Save the Children doesn't have an office themselves. We don't have an office on the, on the islands, but we're working very closely with other NGOs. Better Days, you might have met mm -hmm. them, who are, are partners. Lot with, um, they are partners with you. And that's exactly what they reported us. It's more and more difficult to become access, especially after the fire when they rebuilt now this new fancy, as they think, uh, multiple purpose risk. And yeah, as you saw in the film, we are extremely concerned because this is not reception conditions we can accept for nobody, but especially for children, especially for unaccompanied children. So what we advocate for, and that's what our main work at the moment is to advocate with the German parliament, with the European Commission, the council, because that's where there's a lot of things going on. The multiple purpose risk is a cooperation between the European Commission and the Greek government. And that's what we think we have to, to change. We have to have decentralized accommodation. We have to bring the people from the islands. We, we lobby a lot for that Germany is taking more after the fire. 1,500 have been flown out to Germany. That's where we, we were quite involved in. But that has to continue. And unfortunately, it's harder and harder to get information. And it's also that it's less interest here in Germany. I mean, look at the election debate. There is no talk anymore about the problems of migration and these kind of things. That's the awful thing anyway. They only talk about things when something very dramatic happens, when floods happen, when fire happens, and of course to everyday life, unfortunately. May I add something? Yes, of course, Katja. I think it's, um, of course, you, you, you're right, Jakob, but I think uh, generally uh, spoken, uh, spoken um, the attack on activists is growing uh, within the last years you know, since 2015, to be precisely. I mean, they, they always had a dif difficult job, but it, you know, they, they could do it as, as far as I could wit witness this over the last 20 years. So, but now they're under attack. It's not just that they do dangerous and very difficult work with uh, just a little bit of money, but they, they, they get attacked. And I think the idea behind it is if you get rid of the activists, the problem is solved. No refugees were coming to, Europe or wherever to. Mm -hmm. and, um, and this also, in a way, um, splits the society. You know, and I've, I, I'm worried about this. Could you maybe tell us, uh, Sonia and, and Douglas, how you could finance this all? I mean, what were your sources? <laughs> who, who supports you? Uh, actually, when with, we, love. <laughs> with love. With <laughs> love. Katya's love. Um, no, seriously, uh, of course, uh, Katya's uh, support for us was tremendous because the, the movie also brought attention to the project. But how we started basically in 2018, we put our savings into it. Uh, I quit my job in politics, Doug uh, quit his job as a teacher in, uh, in the States. We decided to create it, put the savings into it, brought Doug's equipment from the state and just like, let's give it a try. We can afford it at this moment. Let's give it maybe a year. Let's see how it's going. And after a year, we're just like, okay, I guess it's going to be an adventure for much longer than a year. And slowly, slowly, we, um, it's, not diff it's not very easy to find support for projects like ours. Because we, as I maybe put it uh, not very nicely, we compete with other organizations who are bringing blankets, food, um, providing clean water in, uh, in camps, which is absolutely necessary at this moment, we are focusing on the future of people. For us, it's all about giving them a chance for a dignified life after they get asylum, because they're really wasting this time in the camps. And we know people who are there for four years, four years of almost 
a lockdown type of situation. So for us, it's about their future. What are they going to do next? They need to get those skills when they are there. And as you, you can imagine, if you start a campaign and you show pictures of grown-up men running with cameras, and on the other hand, you have really lovely images of, of children getting uh, fruits and blankets, um, like what's going to move people more, right? So yes, uh, we are in constant fundraising um, type of situation. We got some uh, donors, German donors this year, that allowed us to create a better and nicer studio on Lesbos to continue. But it definitely is a constant process. You, you're never out of it. And what about the film community, uh, other film schools maybe, the European Film Academy? Yeah. Uh, organizations what about them? like that. What about them? But do they help? Do they support? Well, so, we do, we is there somebody from the European yeah. Film Academy here? <laughs> I think, I'm, I'm joking. I think I'm, I'm, was here, yeah. for example. Yeah, we've spoken and, with Matthias and, yeah. uh, and uh, many other organizations, and we've had a lot of outreach uh, from IDFA, from Movies That Matter, from this festival. Uh, there's been uh, a tremendous outpouring of support from uh, Culture Stiftung, from Allianz, um, who's actually financing our next film, which premieres at Gorky on October 11th. And it touches upon the topic that, um, that Katja is talking about, which is about how are refugees rep are represented in the media and how do citizen journalists, uh, what are the protections that are there for them? Uh, mm -hmm. When they're doing this critical work inside, they're completely exposed. And then a lot of the times the, the story which is being constructed by outsider gays, are, they're not uh, there to support them if there's a problem after production happens. Uh, what's the fallout as it was for us, and not just me, but for our students who were harassed and intimidated consistently by the police there yeah. as minors without protections, without even adults present, without translation, sign this, it's in Greek. I mean, like really intense experiences, scary experiences for them. There's no one really there to support a citizen journalist who's doing the, the, the dirty work every day. Um, and so the film is called Nothing About Us Without Us. And it argues for a change, a, a new standard of engagement between mainstream media and the communities that are being reported upon. Instead, what, how could the story change if the people that are inside actually have a say about how that story is told? Uh, and that's not possible if it's not for support from these uh, cultural alliances and these other film community members like Katya and Micah de Young, who supported us in the past. Um, it's, it's growing. More and more people are getting involved with us. So we, we encourage more to join us, please. Yes, and uh, the film festival, uh, Human Rights Film Festival, uh, where we presented our uh, movie, our first documentary last year, also opened many doors for us. Because we, we feel like we have a community of people who really think alike, right? They appreciate our work, we appreciate their work, and they get, put us in touch with people who may be interested in supporting, in teaching with us, uh, in, uh, in uh, donating or putting us in contact with somebody who can, right? Mm. So we have to say like a big thank you to the film festival as well, and Anna, uh, it was really amazing. And you know, if you haven't had a chance yet, you can go into the exhibition hall and you yes. can see actually the work that the students have produced. There's some clips in this film um, but there's a giant archive on the wall in there through television screens, VR, photo boards, iPads, and it's the two-year archive of struggle that the people on Lesbos have endured. And that's the work of the students of our program. That's the citizen journalism side of what we've worked on. Uh, please go see that and please uh, also hopefully come to Gorky on the, on the 11th and see more of their content, and more of their work. Um, they're amazing, amazing creators. There's one paradox in the movie, and I think Jacob can maybe um, say something to that. It is on the one hand, of course, they want to leave the island because for them, like you also say, it's a terrible place that one wants to leave. On the other hand, when they leave it, they fall out of, of, of help and out of structures. So maybe, mm -hmm. Jacob, you can uh, maybe tell us more about that. Yeah, I mean, that's why we don't only work on the islands. For sure, there was a lot of focus on the islands because, yeah, that was, that was in the media. And exactly as you said, even if you get a refugee status and the film was said that one is waiting till the end of the procedure, it doesn't mean that your life is better because in Greece, normally people don't find work. There's no sec uh, security network like we have in Germany. So some people even prefer to stay on the island as long as they don't know where to go uh, because in Athens, they might also sleep in a big stadium. So Save the Children makes sure to really try to reach out to all the children because there are some trying to go on the Balkan route afterwards. Mm. 
Um, I just want to say one thing, which I think you're very right. Uh, people get moved if they see a child which has no food. For sure, it's very important, the humanitarian work, which we also do, and access to medical care. But education, and I would say that's what you're doing, it's education, is extremely important. And uh, Save the Children just released a report about the access of uh, refugee and migrant children uh, to education, and it's approximately 14% who go to regular school. I mean, what you're doing is great, and it's on top, but it's only 14%. On the paper, they should have a right and so on, but you see the condition, there are not enough teachers, they can't get out of the camp, with COVID it's getting even worse, there's problem of transport and so on. So this is really uh, something we have to be aware of, that a lot of children, and it's, it's still, uh, I don't have the exact figure, but it's, uh, it's uh, 20,000, I think, children in Greece, not, uh, not only on Lesbos, uh, which are lacking all these, uh, um, yeah, this access to education and uh, general care, and that's what we are focusing on. And I think your film is a great contribution to see that there's more than only the humanitarian aid. And mm -hmm. that, that education tends to cut off at a very young age. Mm. And so there's nothing for the teenagers. There's mm. nothing for the young adults. Yeah. And that's why we created this program. It was to fill that gap, because yeah. even the supports that are provided for education, as you're saying, are dismal. Uh, really, really unbelievably low numbers. The capacity is just, you know, we're six years in here and like there's no excuse anymore to say you couldn't have figured out a way already to provide it. But there's zero educational opportunities for anyone over 12. It's scary. Maybe it's time to open up uh, for comments, for questions. We have a microphone right here in the middle. So if somebody wants to ask a question or just make a comment, please don't be shy. Come up and do it. Yay, yeah, somebody's coming. Okay. Hi. This isn't scary at all. <laughs> <laughs> so, Katya's hi, always name. scary, we know. Yeah, yeah, although the spotlight is on you, so I don't know why, but still. <laughs> <laughs> hi, my name is Sabina. I'm volunteering for the festival, and my question would be, we've seen young people go through so much, a fire, a flood, living in a refugee camp, a global pandemic. How do you think the medium film helped them cope with those experiences? Mm, okay, I'm, I'm gonna start. Um, for us, I think the, the breakthrough moment was when, the, when they locked the camp before even one case of COVID was located there. And you can argue both sides. You can say like, okay, because the camp was closed, they, they were able to have the first case only six months later. But you can argue also that when everybody were trusted with like, okay, you're gonna be wearing mask and, uh, and cleaning your hands and this is how you'll be protecting yourself. Uh, they were not trusted. Of course, there was also there, there were also not um, many resources in the camp to do so, but they were simply closed and for us, it was this moment like, it, it, it's, it's wrong. It, it's really wrong. Um, it's the same thing is happening right now when uh, the camps are still closed. And even though a big population of the camps is vaccinated, they are not allowed to leave. Um, so for us, it was, okay, we have to do something about it. Nobody could enter the camp. And um, we had many requests from international media saying like, oh, do you know what's happening in the camp? Like maybe you can smuggle a camera, get some footage and so on. So that created the citizen journalism project. And we saw that suddenly from being very depressed and not really knowing what to do with themselves, like every day you get up, you go to a line, wait four hours to get breakfast, then you go eat the breakfast, you go to the line again to get lunch. They suddenly lighten up. There was sudden, suddenly some energy coming, right? And the fact that they were able to report uh, was really amazing. It empowered them to do something, right? Uh, it continued. Then it was a small opening for the summer, of course, because tourists are coming. And then it was this a little bit down on, on energy. And then the fire and the fact that they were, again, able to work with big media and they had something to say, and I have to give it to some of those big media that some of them even paid them a fair salary. This was also something that you see very, very rarely. Um, this, this gave them this additional impact. On the other hand, they were just like, uh, you know, we reported for them, we provide all the footage, and they said it like, 
it, it, it's not really how it should be, right? And in our new movie that Doug mentioned that will be um, in Gorky on the 11th of October, there's this really nice moment when they're complaining about those big media non-stop, and then there's only one moment when Milat is talking about Katya, because we're asking, like, there must be like a good moment working with media, and she's like, I can only think about Katya Riemann. Uh, he's like, she was just with us, right? She was like reporting on us and, and she was also like with us the whole time. She was our friend. She didn't come just for the story and, and sort of used us and left. Katya's in touch with all the people uh, from the movie all the time. Um, helping them here because some of them are in Germany, right? And I think this type of storytelling really helps people, especially right now in this situation. Can I add, add something? Sure. It's maybe not fully the answer to your question because she already answered this, but I would like to add something on top, which is very interesting for me, and maybe it kind of sums up what you might think and what you are allowed to think. So I remember when I did a long interview for a very good, interesting podcast, which is called Role Model for the start of my film. Um, the podcaster was a very smart young man said at the end, Katya, when I saw the documentary, I found myself having some prejudice. And I said, oh, I'm interested in, in, in knowing about that. And he said, and that was courageous that he said it. He said, I would have not expected to find so smart, intelligent, eloquent, and sh humorous, do you say humor, or people full of humor who are refugees. And said, yeah, because this is the stigma that we are dealing with constantly, every day in the news, every day when we talk about the so-called refugee crisis. We call it a crisis. And I think it's in the, sometimes it's in the words, right? This is not our crisis. It's someone else's conflict and war. And nobody decided, I mean, this is randomly sad, nobody decided to become a refugee. But for me, in a way, it, it seems like refugees became their an own nationality. They're coming from all places, they're coming from all milieus, from all kinds of backgrounds, you know? And I found it, I'm, I'm saying this because you could think of that, saying, well, all these people, that allowed me to have a conversation with them. They are so talented and so smart and they speak in a, in a different language on top of this. And if we take away the stigma and look at the people, we see that we are all very close to each other. And it's a question if we want to find something that uh, connects us of, or if you want to, to find something that, what's the difference of connection in English? Puts us divides. apart. Thank you. Or divides us. Yeah. Divides us. Yeah. Yes, amen. Yeah. <laughs> I'm finished. That's true. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>Yeah, this is Hussein Ali, one of our students who, uh, he's, he didn't stand up before because he's filming right now. He's, he's still working. Um, and there's uh, some amazing... Yeah, but he's working amazing, on his yeah. uh, project uh, here in Germany because Hussein Ali was one of the miners who was transferred to Germany. So, one of the lucky ones. And his German is already His German very is so good. great right now. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> and he's working on his own documentary about his personal experience in Moria. So... Yeah, and I see Mustafa there in the Mustafa back, yes? Mustafa's here. Yes. And maybe Ali Reza is here as well. And that, you know, there's a whole entire group of people who we referenced earlier who were here for the first screening at Click, and they can't be here because even though now they're in Germany and they're in a safer place from the conditions they were in in Moria, they're, they only, they're still, like, held back, like, 72 hours. They had to get written permission. We had to wrestle with people. Well, they to had to, to go to here. school. Sorry for interrupt here, but yes, I had to go to school. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. But only us, sir. And then the rest of them, there was a limitation on their freedom of mobility That's here true. in Germany.
And they still don't have answers about their asylum. And, and we even have Zara, who's in the film with Madi. Yeah. She still hasn't even had an interview yet. But that's Greece. That's, yeah. And that's in Greece. But, she's, but she hasn't had an interview. And she was a student of ours in 2018. It's like the late, eight, late 2018 she arrives. And she still hasn't even had an interview. So this crisis is not a crisis that uh, the way it's presented. It's a crisis for the individuals who live every day and endure this. Mm -hmm. And it's a crisis of will, and it's a crisis of presentation of, of this story in the media. Um, they're yeah. the ones who are in crisis. Yeah. It's really tough. We are especially annoyed when people call it European migration crisis. It sort of suggests that we Europeans are suffering from this migration crisis. I mean, for God's sake. I mean, people go to, go to Italy, go to Greece, see the situation in the south of uh, Spain, and you will see what the, what the crisis is and whom is the crisis actually affecting. Because it is really not affecting European Western societies. It is not. We're going to handle this, what is, what is happening, people coming and trying to find their place in the society, trying to go to school, trying to work. This is what is happening. The crisis is affecting them. And if we have a crisis here, it's not even a crisis of scale, it's a crisis of political will at this moment. Mm. Can I add something? I would like to, to add something, it's a different subject, but um, um, it's, you know, they are called Refocus Media Lab. <laughs> <laughs> so it's plural. Why is that? Oh, well, why is that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, there is a project of bringing the labs in different places. Uh, so we're very, when before the coronavirus hit, we were hoping to open a second lab in Athens, uh, but yeah, Corona. And uh, now, actually, we are very hopeful that there will be one lab here in Berlin because so many talented people are coming uh, and they want to continue their education. And as much as there's a lot of support in, uh, in Germany, it is really hard for people to continue their work, everything they learned with us here, especially. There are nice internships, but they have to build their portfolio to go into those internships. Uh, they can create their uh, new movies, new projects, but they need to have access to equipment. Uh, and it is not that easy. So we're hoping that there will be one lab here very soon as well. Yeah. Or in different Thank camps. And in other camps. And in camps other as well. Yeah. Crisis That's zones. Our, yeah. Yes, the projects are big. <laughs> the projects are big. And we have a huge support here uh, with Katya. We have somebody <laughs> who wants to ask us a question. Yes. Um, hi, my name is Saskia Maya, and I thank you for this amazing movie. And it was really emotional, especially the um, scene when you two both touched each other, because <laughs> you said it's changed you a lot, right? And how did all the things that happened affect your own life? So when you came back home, do you think you changed the way of speaking with your friends and family or like to be glad about your life? So how did this, all this affected you? Well, the, the timing of these situations have, has been very difficult because of COVID. We've also, I actually haven't seen my family in, in a really long time. Almost I haven't three been, years. Almost three years now uh, since because of COVID lockdowns and the, the ability to travel to America or back to Europe, for us to stay together. Uh, but we were here last year for the premiere of our film, Even After Death, and I was physically here in Berlin, but mentally I was in Lesbos. Mm. And I couldn't, I couldn't separate from those two experiences. I, it was an out-of-body experience to be here for five days or something. I was constantly there. And, and the entire time that we've been stuck in lockdown outside of Lesbos, and in exile, right, uh, during this time period. We are in Lesbos every day through technology. We're on Zoom rooms, we're on Telegram, we are constantly there. So I, I think that there was a, a moment in the holidays this year where clearly I miss my family and I haven't had seen them for the holidays in a while, but um, had a really intense moment on the street in, in Warsaw where I just saw this, this little commercial and it was something really simple. And it was just about how uh, a, a Greek 
older Greek couple couldn't connect with their family for the holiday, couldn't bring them there because of a problem or something, and then they brought in some refugee families that were stuck in the park, and then that became their family. And then you could see that this continued forward, that this was not a one-time moment, that you could see that this was the first day of a lifetime engagement with this family. And that's the way we feel. We feel that these members of our community, it's not, it's not you know, the title of the film is a film school in Moria, but it's a film family in, in, the, in the world. These people are members of our family and they will be forever. And they're here now and we know that we'll be at their weddings and we know that we will know their children and they will know ours. And um, that's, the, that's how our lives have changed. Um, not just the negative, but the positive. What, what, how we have, as individuals has benefited from this uh, experience and this engagement. We've learned so much from them. It's not really about what we've been able to provide for them. It's what they've given to us. Mm. And that's changed everything. But, but how do you deal with this Western country lifestyle right now? Since you have, like, do you know what I mean? How do you feel in yeah, this world? Yeah, I, I like, know exactly what you mean because um, I started... Uh, I started working in humanitarian aid um, in Serbia. This was my first engagement in 2016 when the border, the Hungarians closed the border and people just were like stuck on the Serbian side. Absolutely no support for months. Uh, there was one wild camp, 300 people, one toy toy toilet, no showers, nothing. It was like the, the conditions there, it was absolutely heartbreaking. So we were doing the basic needs support and uh, I was doing it for like almost half a year. I came back home for Christmas and I felt so detached from everything because suddenly like you're sitting at this dinner with your family and there's everything there, right? But you spend time like, sorry, eating really shitty food somewhere on the side, uh, usually with people there trying to get something more for them for months and, and suddenly like, you have everything and you have this loving family and they want to make your life as pleasurable as possible. But on the, on the other hand, like, I was very disappointed that nobody was asking me about this. Nobody wanted to spend mm. hours talking to me about this. They were just like, okay, you probably need to get some sleep, some food and so on. So how was it? Okay. And that was it. Nobody wanted to go deep into it. And I was extremely disappointed. I was like, people, you don't know. You don't know, you should know what is happening there. So for the first, and of course I returned. Um, and then slowly, slowly, it be becomes your normal, right? For us right now, like Lesbos is our normal life. It's not this, it's not the splendor of this film festival. It, Lesbos, our apartment, the camp, one happy family community center where we are every day. This is what we are now used to. And you need to have a supporting environment to do this work. If somebody thinks about it, you really need to, first of all, have your mindset in the right place. And the second, find somebody who's really close to you. Share with those people because it impacts you, whether it's this moment or it's in one week, one month, one year, it's gonna impact you somehow. We are extremely lucky that we have each other, we just got married and we found each other in basically this crisis situation. So this is what helps us and what also allows us to, to continue and, uh, and grow and, and build this community. I remember last year I saw at the film festival, if I may say that, at this film festival, I saw a film, Anna, she might know the title, about, it was a French documentary about doctors who were working with Médecins Sans Frontières, doctors um, on call, so I think it's, it's in English, Ärzte ohne Grenzen in German. And, um, and it, the film dealt exactly with what you were just describing, how it is to come back mm -hmm. from, from an emergency you know, like mm -hmm. for three weeks or three months being in East Congo or wherever, mm -hmm. you know, and then being back somewhere in France with your wife or your husband, your children, your parents, your brothers, your friends, your neighbors, and nobody's asking you, how are you? How was it? What's the situation there? And I, I remember I, I saw it and, you know, among, among all the other films that are really focusing on, 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 on conflict and 
human, human rights violations. I, I found myself in the audience nonstop crying because those people who are doing this amazing work for other people would then not have anyone who's interested in their work. This is bizarre, you know? And on the other hand, they would, you know, everybody demands in a way that you, if you do this kind of strange work, somewhere out there in the global uh, south, then if you come back, you know, you should be like us. You know, is it this expectation or is it disinterest or is it just, in a way, not knowing how to ask, maybe, not knowing how to deal with it. So if you have friends or, I don't know, um, students and then university who are doing this kind of work, also here in Germany as activists, now show some interest because it can in, enrich us in, in a way. And I remember when I, uh, uh, when I released my book about humanitarian work that I'm accompanying since 20 years last year, many people asked me, oh, said to me, oh, I didn't know that you do this. And I felt so ashamed and I, I, I thought, well, I was not successful enough with what I did and then I, you know, changed my mindset and said, stop, it's not me, it's about you. You could know, you could have known if you want to know, because I'm doing this since 20 fucking years. <laughs> so, um, yeah, I just wanted to give these thoughts you know, yeah. Yeah. for the road. Uh, we, we know what you mean, because um, <laughs> maybe it's also on us, because we're not extremely active on social media, but. Um, we come back and uh, friends, like really close friends, they're just like, so where have you been this whole time? And it's like, oh, on Lesbos, right? It's like, oh, this crisis is still happening there? For God's sake, right? <laughs> and oh, this is the next friend, he was like, oh, dog, you're still doing this amazing work with Tibetan refugees in India. <laughs> and I was like, Doug is very engaged in the movement, but ever since we're together and created the foundation, we're, we're, we're doing work with um, people who come to Europe. It's just like, yeah, well, that was 10 years ago, right? Mm -hmm. So it's like, we see, but on the other hand, which is like, you, you cannot fully blame people because we no. haven't been engaged in their life either, of course. right? We're like, like one of our best friends in Philadelphia, they, they had two babies ever since we saw them last time. Wow. Uh, Doug's beloved brother had just a baby, it's, it's six months old and we just cannot go and see them because of COVID, yeah. because we don't want to be separated. That, that can go back. Uh, uh, I only on November 1st, as his spouse will be able to go with him. So um, we, we see that we are also detached from their problems. It helps staying in, in contact true. with everything that is happening to people uh, in true. places where you used to live, your friends, uh, because you, you really, from time to time, has, have to detach from everything bad that is happening in the world. Okay, so, thank you. Thank it's you. late. Thank you for answering so honestly, because this is what I wanted to know. <laughs> how do you feel and how do you go on with your life? Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Yeah, maybe it also has to do with a bad conscience somehow, you know, if they don't ask, then they don't know. And if they would know, they would maybe feel guilty that they don't do anything. I think it's a very broad, mm -hmm. broad topic, I yeah. think, you know, and I mean, even if that seems to be far-fetched, but with Holocaust survivors, for example, the case is they came back from the camps, they didn't talk to anybody, and nobody wanted to know, and only when they became very, very old, it all mm -hmm. came back, and mm -hmm. then sometimes in families from Holocaust survivors, the kids said, well, you never talked, and the survivor said yes, and you never asked. So, you know, it's 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 always a yeah. double, a double thing. And sure. I it just is. wanted to to add that. Yeah. So That's maybe there's time for one last comment or one last. 1938. Question. Yes. It's very late. Yeah, we can wrap <laughs> it up right here. Or somebody <laughs> feels the urge to t ask us one more thing or to have one last comment. Yes, I somebody, see somebody has the urge. running. 
So we have one last question here. Hi. Um, first, I wanted to say <laughs> that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. Katya, the solution woman. So, Thanks. Okay. Yeah, much better. <laughs> so, uh, first, I wanted to say that I find a really nice project what you did uh, when you decided to use your um, savings and go there. So uh, I have two questions. One was, is, uh, what was the main thing that made, made you to decide to do that, to suddenly um, go there? And uh, what was inside like you that motivate you to do it? And the second one, uh, it's a bit more about the beginning of it. When, when you arrived there, how difficult or easy, I don't know, was it to start doing that? Um, yeah, about the beginning of the process of it. Sure. Um, I think I had been to Lesbos in 2016 and saw what was at that moment a legitimate crisis of uh, human movement. And I wanted to bring that into the classroom at, back in America. And I wanted my students to understand what was happening, but not from the fast paced like news cycle, but from the people who were on the front line of front lines of experience. And we did that. And and then a year had passed and the EU Turkey deal came in into effect and nothing had changed for in terms of educational resources and as we were saying, like nothing was for teenagers. And I've been working with young media creators for a decade in, in America, and I, I saw no change or no opportunities being brought to the young people who were in this uh, situation, in these camps, on Lesbos in particular. And then I just started thinking, well, I can continue to con do the work I'm doing now, bring this story into the classroom all the time, uh, keep teaching young inner city youth who needed that support as well, or anyone else in Philadelphia could do that, and I could go do it in Lesbos and recreate it in Lesbos to say, if no one's going to bring it to them, well, I could, maybe, I could try. And if, if I try and it doesn't work, then okay. But if I don't try, then I really can't throw the stone at the other house to say, why didn't you do it? So we tried. And, and those were actually, right now it's harder than it was back then. That was just pure joy every day. Just throw your own gear in a backpack, go to the community center, hang out with young people, teach them how to use the tools, have a beautiful time every day. And then, you know, we didn't even do it with any money. I mean, we did it with mobile devices and we just had a blast. And so that <laughs> the beginning was just pure engagement and it was a lot of fun and the logistics were super simple. And now it's about how do you sustain the success of, and, the, and the, the structure that is now people are demanding more access and there's more people and we need to find a way to keep it alive and help it expand and then uh, and then help them expand help them grow so it's new challenges um, but it's all still from that same um, that same like impetus to say uh, mm -hmm. you see the problem you feel it in your bones and you do something about it and if you can't do that and it doesn't matter what the problem is it doesn't matter what it, what the issue is just get involved in something. If it strikes you strongly and stays with you and you can't sleep over it, engage somehow, mm. whatever it is. Uh, for, for me, the beginning was uh, different because uh, I worked in politics. Basically, I started working for different politicians when I was already in college. And it was amazing and fascinating at the beginning, of course, you're with those important people all the time. Uh, <laughs> But I worked with them and for them for a very long time. And uh, my contract in 2014 was about to end. And I did a sum up of everything that we managed to achieve. And it was a very, very sad picture. Because, and I don't want to throw anybody under the bus here, uh, but most of the politicians I worked for cared very much about their personal image, uh, about how to get re-elected. The elections just happened, and we were already thinking about next elections, and we're taking only the topics that can get us like, more people to vote for us, right? Uh, and I was not interested in that. 
And there is something about um, working for politicians that you're, you're bending a little bit, like your moral spine is just like shifting a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, and at some point you're reaching this moment where you think, mm. okay, one more time, and I'm not gonna go back to my standards, right? Mm. So I was like, okay, I'm not prolonging the, the contract, I'm gonna give myself time to think about it, and I left for this Serbian-Hungarian border. And um, as I say, I don't wanna say that all politicians are, are evil and only self-centered. I mean, I see Notker in the first row. He, he amazingly organized extra discussions for us last year when we were presenting our movie, uh, introduced us to young people who were interested in it. Thank you very much. Like, I love engagement like this. I love when people work for the cause. And as Doug said, like, something annoys you, you, you're angry that this is happening in the world, do something about it, mm. anything. We were at this point of our lives that we already had uh, skills, uh, we could afford to, to start a project, to do a pilot, which is like, okay, let's see if we can do it on our own. Get people who may be interested, who think alike, who can bring something to the project, and let's, Let's move on. We also, we try to approach one organization with the project and they're just like, no, no, no. Another one, no, no, no. So I was like, you know what? They don't want to try it with us. Let's try it ourselves, right? Let's cre create this foundation and see if it works. And purely, something really annoys you, just do something about it and great things may come up. That was actually a wonderful way of wrapping it up. Thank you so <laughs> yeah. much. We see the clock. Yeah, no, but... Thank you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for sharing. Thank you, Thank you very much.